hey, he's there. He's loving on you. He's embracing you. He's holding you in the middle of the night. Oh, yes, while you're driving up and down the road. He's the one that's guiding the wheel. There's no goodness of your own. No goodness of your own. Amen. But we thank God for Jesus. We come down to the best part of the service. The word of the Lord. The word of the Lord. We thank God for the praise and worship. Amen. Y'all keep going. Keep going. Uh, I know it can be hard sometimes, but keep going. Keep going. Amen. God is pleased. And that's all that matters. God is pleased. Amen. And the word of God is finna come. Amen. Oh, our hearts are set for the word. I want you to point your hand at the man of God on today. Say, I need a word. I need a word. And I believe what I need is in your mouth. God bless you. Amen. We bring it up, Bishop. Amen. Uh, uh, Brandon. Amen. Taylor. Hallelujah. What a day to be in the house of the Lord on Father's Day celebrating our Father. You know, I, I thank God for my natural father, but I thank God even more for my spiritual father. And, you know, what, what, what a fitting song. You know, to bring myself down, I always got to squeak out a few notes. So if you guys could just, uh, just bear with me for a little bit. And, and if you need to, you can just drown me out. You can help me sing if need be, amen. Sometimes you have to tell him. There's nobody like you, Lord. There is nobody like you, Lord. There's nobody that's willing to put up with the things I've done. Some of the things I've said. Some of the ways I've acted. But yet and still, you are still here. And you still care for me. Nobody like you, Lord. 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 Lord, I need you. Lord, for just giving us another day and another opportunity, oh God. Father God, I pray that you have your way in today's service, Father. Let your spirit be poured out, oh God. Use me as your mouthpiece on today, God, to encourage your people, Lord God, the way that you've given it to me, God. Father God, I truly thank you today. I honor you. I worship you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Thank God for God. I thank God for Jesus and the sacrifice he made. Uh, you all can be seated if you can. I don't have the intention to be before you long, but I do want to encourage you all today, especially my fellow brothers and fathers. Uh, it, it, sometimes we, we need to hear a little bit of encouragement, even though we may not act like them, we've, we've grown accustomed to making stuff happen and living without always getting much gratitude or something. And I'm not saying I don't because my wife and my kids love them. I'm just saying, you know, sometimes we, we do a lot, we go through a lot, and every once in a while it's good to hear, you know, Jesus loves you. And we often tell people we see on the streets, we see homeless people or people that are struggling that we know they may not be in the body of Christ, we're quick to say, Jesus loves you. 
But I often don't, we often don't tell our brothers and sisters that Jesus still loves you, that Jesus cares for you, that he truly and dearly loves you. So I want to tell you guys today, Jesus loves you. God cares for you. You want to know how I know that he cares for you and that he loves you? Because you're here. And you're sitting in this place right now. Now, there were millions and billions of people that God could have chosen to be here right here on today. But you're here right now. And I'm not talking about what could have been, what could have happened in our life, but I'm even talking about in conception, if you know what I mean. There were a lot of opportunities that could have been here. There were a lot of opportunities that could have been here, but God chose you to be the one. And if he chose you to be the one, then that shows you how much he truly cares for you and how much he truly loves you. Because the word does say, for God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son. So if you are in this world right now, that means he cared for you. He made a sacrifice for you. He paid for you. So when we get into this word, I believe that we're going to, give, like I said, give you a little bit of encouragement and let you see how much Jesus really cares. Amen. If you could turn with me to Ephesians chapter 1. It'll be verses 3 through 8. And I'll be reading from New Living. Uh, whatever's your favorite, follow along. It says, All praise to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realms because we are united with Christ. Even before he made the world, God loved us and chose us in Christ to be holy and without fault in his eyes. God decided in advance to adopt us into his own family by bringing us into himself through Jesus Christ. This is what he wanted to do, and it gave him great pleasure. So again, if you are here right now under the sound of my voice, listen to what I have to say. That lets you know how much God loves you and how much we bring pleasure to him when we do what we're supposed to do. Amen. So we praise God for the glorious grace he's poured out on us who belong to his dear son. He is so rich in kindness and grace that he purchased us, purchased our freedom with the blood of his son and forgave our sins. He showered his kindness on us along with the wisdom and understanding. And again, if John 3, 16, you can, we can all say it together. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish and have everlasting life. The message that God has given me to encourage the people today is just simply, you are worth it. You're worth it. You are worth it. You are worth it. You all can be seated. Now, you can't associate worth without value. And the definition of value is a fair return in goods, services, or money for something exchanged. The amount of money something should cost, or the amount of money that a person has said something should cost. But worth is the equivalent of a specified amount or figure, the value of something measured by its qualities or by the esteem in which it is held. So oftentimes what I've learned coming up and around people, people could tell you what some, the value of something is all they want. But its worth is only what, what someone is willing to pay for. So you may say it's worth something else, but if nobody's willing to give you that amount, then it's only worth what you're willing to get. The thing is, we're too busy taking what people are willing to give us instead of what we're worth. And we need to quit doing that. God already established our value and paid what he determined, determined for us to be worth. Now, is my life worth Christ? No. But God determined that Jesus Christ's life was worth mine. That's why he sent him to die on the cross, and that's why we're still here. Amen? So again, Jesus cares for you. He loves you. So if we've already allowed God, if God has already established what our value is and already paid what he thought our worth is, we should have a high standard for how we allow people to treat us and how we carry ourselves. Amen. One thing I love to watch is called the Barrett Jackson car auction. There's Barrett Jackson, there's Meekum. Now these are car auctions where they have the best of the best cars come through the uh, assembly line on the auction block. And when I'm talking, these are the creme de la creme of cars. It's not like the auction we go to and you might get you a 2018 Toyota Tercel or a, a, a Lexus perhaps, maybe even a Mercedes. We're talking about 60s and 70s and 80s and 50s uh, Roadrunners, GT500 Mustangs. We're talking 
the creme de la creme of cars. Now you may see some that run through there that might be 50, 60, 70,000, but you'll see some run through there that are 500, 600, 700,000 dollars for an automobile. Now you might sit there and say, why would anybody pay that much for a car? Because it's worth it. And the person that owns it knows how much its value is worth. So what happens is, they'll bring these, these people are in love with the possessions they have. And they might sell their car, not because they need to, because they want to so they can get something else, or I've had it, I have fun with it, I've enjoyed it, and now it's time for me to move on. So you'll see these cars come through, and they'll put them across the auction block, and like I said, these things are beautiful. And the thing, when you would go to an auction, the understanding is, I understand that whatever I see today is going to have value to it. I can't come in this auction expecting to get something for the low low because everybody that's selling something understands that what I'm selling today has value. Now, when the ones that have the, the, the cars with the extreme value, they put on, on their car what is called a reserve. And a reserve is, I expect to get at least this much in order for me to sell this particular vehicle. And if this reserve is not met, then I have no issue taking my car back home until somebody comes along that recognizes what it's worth and gives me what, I, what, what it's due to me. We need to start putting reserves on our own lives and putting reserves on ourselves. We're too busy just happy getting bearded on, but nobody wants to give us what we're truly worth. Now, we've already talked about how God established what our value was when he brought us into this world and found it important enough for us to make it all the way through. He showed how important it was when he had Jesus die on the cross. So if God made that investment, why are we so busy trying to give ourselves away to the, for the first one who makes a bid? That's not what God intended for us to be. You're worth more than that. You're worth more than that, saints. You're worth more than that. So again, these people, they have, some of them have a passion. They love restoring these cars to its original luster. They love taking all the original parts. They want to go ahead and make sure that this car is 100% how it was when it came off the factory line because the, way, the more original it is, the more valuable it is. The more intact it is, the more valuable it is. Now you may see a few of them come across the line that they've taken some big wheels and done a few little things to them. They call those resto mods where it's been restored and modified in order to fit a certain thing. And they'll bring to us big money, but they ain't gonna bring what, what relatively the big money like the all original car does. So what happens is these people that do the resto mods, they don't have a problem getting aftermarket parts and whatever they can find, they can fit and mold their car to make it look a certain way. And that's what we allow people to do to us. We allow people to make us fit and mold us a certain way to fit what they want for us to have. Again, these are their possessions and quit allowing people to, uh, to allow you to feel like a possession to them. So they'll put things on you that God didn't call them to be on you. They'll tell you a certain way that God didn't tell you you were. They'll tell you you have this anointing and you don't. They'll justify their gift and say that I'm the one that increased your gift and they didn't. And it's a gift from God. All these different things in order to fit. It's just like an aftermarket part. See, the aftermarket parts, I can get an aftermarket part from anywhere. I can go to Amazon. I can go to AutoZone. I can go to O'Reilly's. I can go to somebody's backyard. I can order on eBay. I can go all over the place to get these aftermarket parts. Aftermarket parts are a dime a dozen. And that's what the thing about an aftermarket part is, they don't always fit right out the box. And that's the expectation. So when you get an aftermarket part, sometimes you have to cut, you have to bend, you have to modify, you have to twist. Sometimes you gotta heat it up, you gotta break it up. All these different things with an aftermarket part, we allow people to treat us like an aftermarket part. So now I have a certain value, but it's not gonna fit my lifestyle, so you need to break that off. I have a certain mindset and it's not going to fit what I think in my circle, so you need to break that off. In order for you to fit with me, I need you to take that away and, and get rid of that and get rid of that because I don't like all that and it don't take all that. But God made you a certain way with a specific VIN number and, says, and that shows how much value you have to him. So if God values me that way, why are you going to allow them to value a, you a certain way? So again, these resto minds, they're gorgeous. And most of the time, I would probably prefer one of them because this is the way they look. But we're talking about the original cars. So these original ones, you hear them start them things up, and they bring them up across the auction box. And I know you love vehicles, and you'll see these, these Barracudas from 1974, 68 Mustang GT, five, six, $700,000. And what they do, you know what they don't do? They don't allow everybody to put their hands on them. 
So they'll have people, and they have to have protection. So they, the people that do touch them have on gloves because they realize how important and how valuable these cars are. So they'll bring them across the auction block, and they'll have gloves on them. And everybody, you can look, but you can't touch. That's the thing. I don't mind you talking, but don't touch. So they'll bring these cars across the auction block, and they'll look at them, and they'll be like, whoa! And they'll see the VIN number, and they'll see that everything is original, and that's factory paint, and nothing's been modified. And see, if you got the original stuff, all original, sometimes you can go to the factory and get parts, and it's still valuable. But if everything is original and the part has never been taken off, that, that increases the price even more. So now I have this vehicle that's from the fact manufacturer, made the way the manufacturer made it, Intended the way the manufacturer intended for it to be, looks the same way, acts the same way, smells the same way, runs the same way, same numbers, everything matches. That's going to drive the number way up. People will say, whoo, this is going to bring a big number. This one has a reserve. It has to get to this number. And that, that owner of that car, he's just sitting back, laughing and smiling. If I get it, I get it. If I don't, I don't. Because I know how much this thing is worth to me. And I'm not going to just let it go for anything. So after they're done, they'll begin to bid and bid and bid. And people continue to bid just like they try to bid on your life and give you positions. And I'll let you come to my church and play this. Or I'll let you come over here and do that. Or I'll let you be on this flyer. All the while, they don't value you because they don't value themselves. Anybody that's willing to sell themselves short and do the things they do, I wouldn't want to have nothing to do with them. Because if they treat themselves that way, how do you think they're going to treat you? But you're worth more than that. You were worth more than that. God already established your value and paid what he thought you were worth. So you're worth more than that. So now these cars will come through and they'll begin to rub on them and touch them and hear them and everything like that. And those numbers go through the roof. And like I said, if they don't hit that reserve, that's okay. They'll take their car and I'll go to the next one. But every once in a while you may have a car. It's all original. And they've gone and they, 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 it's, it, it's got factory parts. I didn't have nothing aftermarket, but I did have to go to the dealership and get a part. That's okay though, because it's good when God gives you the part. When you go back to the manufacturer and get the part, you know what's going to fit every time. I would rather have one where I didn't have to do anything with it, but if sometimes you have to get a part or you have to have something replaced, it's good to go back to the manufacturer and get what God has for you. So when you go to the manufacturer, they want to make sure that they give you exactly what God intended for you to have. So how do they do that? They want to get your VIN number. They want to have this. They give you this number, this number, this number. People that don't care about aftermarket, all they want to know is what make model and make a model. Yeah. And here it is. But the dealer, when you go to the dealer and order a part, I don't care if it's a bulb. I know make, model, year, VIN number, because everything is not always the same on these cars. There's things called split years, all kinds of stuff that can be different amongst these cars. So they go and they'll get there and they'll get the factory part and put the factory part back on the factory production that God made or that the manufacturer made and it still hold a high significant value. Maybe not as much, but still valuable. And these people still have the same treatment for their cars like the, the people that have the original does. Now here comes us that wants to get a classic car, old school box Chevy, the, the, the deuce and a quarter, and we want to go ahead and put big wheels on it, sound system on it, uh, designer interior, pay thirty, forty thousand dollars and the car ain't worth five, but five thousand. You got forty thousand dollars worth of parts and stuff in it on a five thousand dollar car. It don't half run right. It, all you smell is gas, your eyes are burning when you're sitting on the inside because the carburetor ain't set right. You can't start it in the winter time because you can't get the gas to flow to the motor, but it look good. I don't care that it run right. I don't care, but it look good. Most people would rather drive their car down the street on a trailer saying it look good than drive it past you because you know it ain't got no power in it. So now these people do all this stuff to this car, and then when they try to get rid of or sell it, they say, well, it's worth $45,000 because I put all that in it. But the person say, I don't want all that mess. I want the original. So if you give this to me or I take this person in, now I'm going to have to strip off all this mess that you put on it in order to bring it back to the original condition so I can restore it the right way. We have too much people putting too much mess on us because they could treat us like we're possessions. Everything is not to be applied to us. If God did not give it to us, if God didn't design for us to, for us to happen, then quit accepting it and quit putting it on yourself. Because all you're doing is decreasing the value that God has already established and set for you. Amen?
I told I'm almost done. I told you it's not going to be long. Quit allowing people to treat you worse than what you should. You are valuable and God loves you. He gets it and you are worth it. So now I'm thinking about uh, desperate people. You'll go to these, these high-end auctions. Now, you'll go to a regular auction around here and you'll see some desperate car dealers because they haven't had good numbers. So we'll send, I mean, we used to do it. We'll send a few cars to the auction to try to make a few dollars and just give me this, just try to make a little something. That's what you consider a desperate seller. When you're desperate, you'll take almost anything to get rid of something. Now we got people that are desperate to be in circles they don't belong in, to be in relationships they don't belong in, to be with people they don't belong in. Desperate. And I'll accept or take anything just so I can say I'm with you. I don't care how much you good you think somebody treats you. If they're not willing to commit to you, they don't value you the way you deserve to be valued. Do not care. When you value something, you do everything in your power to, put, to make sure that you, uh, you, you, you keep on, you hold on to it. So you have people, well, why, why should we get married? It's just a piece of paper. We're doing good anyway. No, no, no. It's not just a piece of paper. Otherwise, God wouldn't have talked about it in his word. It's a covenant. So if it's just a piece of paper, you wouldn't have a problem with a signless piece of paper going over to the courthouse and, having, and, and taking care of this. Treat me the way I deserve to be treated. Because I'm worth it. Why? Because God already said I was. He already established my value, did he not? And he already paid for what I was worth. So quit letting people treat you like you're worthless. And a possession. And whenever I get tired of you, I can just go ahead and discard you. Quit being so desperate. You're worth more than that. You're worth it. You're worth it. So I remember... Uh, uh, watching shows and there would be these jewelers and God when he made us he made us like fine pieces of jewelry we're like fine pieces of art we are his, his, his beauty we're the apple of his eye and when you go to these when you, I watch these shows and they go and they'll get these values and sometimes when you go in these stores they'll have a particular piece that they'll keep on the top shelf we're top shelf you know we're top shelf so they'll keep these pieces well, every time people think of top shelf they always think of alcohol but if you go to a fine art store, they'll have some things that you just can't touch because I can't have you put your oily, crummy hands on it because it'll ruin the paint, painting or all this different stuff. So they'll put these different things on the very top shelf and they'll keep it dusted and they'll keep it beautiful and all this stuff. And people will come in and they'll say, hey, can I see that? And they'll put their gloves on, they'll bring it down and they'll have you look at it and all this kind of stuff. And they'll say, well, how much is that? This little diamond here or this piece right here, that'll cost you 150000 Woo! Can, well, can you do this much? No, I can't do that. Well, how about this much? No, I can't do that either. Well, can you finance it? No, I ain't going to be able to do that because I don't know what you're going to do later on down the line with this financing. And this thing means way too much for me to walk out this room and not have, have it guaranteed. So they'll pe people come and go, come and go, keep on picking up this thing and looking at this possession. And that jeweler has no issue with keeping it cleaned up and putting it back on the top shelf. Because they know at some point, somebody's going to know how much this thing is really worth and not going to have a problem spending the money for it. So now, they'll take it and they'll just keep it looking good. Keep it looking good. Keep it looking good. Keep doing what you're supposed to do. Keep living for God. Keep doing, going to church every day. Keep fasting. Keep praying. Because somebody's going to recognize the value that you have. You don't have to put yourself on the, on, the, on the lower tier because people like dwelling on the lower tier. If God made you top shelf, quit going down to try to uh, hang with people on the lower shelves just so you could be amongst people's company. Everybody is not designed to be on the top shelf. And if people don't recognize that you are top shelf material, don't sit there and lower yourself down in order to have company around you. That's not what God intended to happen. So they'll put it on back up there and just keep on keeping it clean. I don't care if it's five months, six months, it could be two years. That diamond is still going to be worth what it is to that person. And somebody eventually is going to come and get it. And that's how it is with you, saints of God. You are worth what God says you're worth. There is no reason for you to have to lower your standard. There's no reason for you to have to lower your values. There's no reason for you to have to lower your thoughts, your way of life, your way of thinking in order to fit in with somebody who does not want to value. They want you, but they're not willing to do what it takes to get, have you. Or even have your company, have your friendship. 
If they're not willing to do what it takes, then you, you don't have to find yourself fighting to have their possessions. It makes no sense. This person loves being on the bottom shelf, but they want me to be down there too. I'm sorry, I'm worth more than that. I can't dwell in that place. It don't feel good. I'm going to get dirt and dust on me. I can't devalue myself to fit with you. That makes no sense. That's costume jewelry. This is the real thing. God don't make no fakes. He don't make no fakes. Now, if you content being fake and being treated like a fake and acting like a fake, that's on you. But God valued me more than that. That's why he made me the way he made me. There's a time, I remember on, it was Saturday Night Live, and there was a segment where this guy's name was Stuart Smiley. And he was not liked on the show as much. So there'd be times where he'd have to get in the mirror and he'd say, you know, I'm good enough, yep. I'm smart enough, and by golly, people like me. Yep. I'm good enough, yeah. I'm smart enough, and by golly, people like me. And that would just perk him up and make him feel, but sometimes you have to get in the mirror by yourself and say, I'm good enough, I'm smart enough, and by golly, Jesus loves me. I'm good enough, I'm strong enough, and by golly, God cares for me. I'm good enough, I'm wise enough, and by golly, Jesus died for me. I'm worth it. I'm worth it. I'm worth it. So don't, don't feel bad when you don't have people come around all the time. Don't feel bad if people say you're funny acting. I'm not a funny acting. You're the one that's funny acting. You don't recognize what I am. That's okay. Maybe someday you'll get there. Maybe someday you won't. But at the end of the day, God has already made me. He's redeemed me. He's restored me. And he's valued me with a life for a life. He gave blood for my blood. Blood in, blood out. And that's worth more than a little friendship. That's worth more than a little title. That's worth more than a little position. That's worth more than a little job. That's worth more than money. That's worth more than anything in this world to have a position with God. If you think about how valuable you are to God and what God has truly done for you and what he's brought you from. Sister Cora, Sunday school, you, talk, you talked about how all the things that God has brought us to, to, through and what brought us from. And yet and still, we value people's opinions over God's opinion. We value people's opinion of us more than what God's opinion of us is. Help us. He already told us what, what he thought of us. When he went to the word and he said, uh, in, in the scripture, he said, even before he made the world, God loved us and chose us in Christ to be holy and without fault in his eyes. We were his choice. He said that he decided in advance, before you even conceived, to adopt you into his own family by bringing us into him through Christ, the one who sent. And then it said, this gave him great pleasure. Then it said, he paid our debt and ransomed his son for our debt. And yet and still, it ain't good enough. You're good enough. You're strong enough. And Jesus died for you. Sometimes you have to make it personal. And there's a song by Donnie McClurkin. It's an old one. And it says, just for me, just for me, Jesus came and did it just for me. And it's okay to get personal sometimes and get selfish, even though you could be sitting in a room full of other bro brothers and sisters and believers. Sometimes you have to say, Jesus did it just for me. And recognize how much God truly loves and values you. Just for me, just for me. Jesus came and did it just for me. So if that's you today, and you haven't recognized how valuable you really are to God, what he truly thinks about you, what he feels for you, come on down to this altar. Let us pray with you, because you guys are truly worth it. Everybody in this room is worth it to God. If you are still breathing, if he woke you up this morning, if he allowed you to get into this place, then that shows you how much he truly cares for you. We, it's not things that we do on our own. It's not in our own power. It's in God's power and in his grace. And if he's given you an opportunity and you haven't recognized how much you truly care to him, come on down here so we can pray with you. God loves you. He cares for you. He wants you to want him the way that he wants you. All you have to do is come down and accept him. Hallelujah.
recognize just for me that Jesus came and did it just for me. You have to make it personal sometimes.